Do you ever feel the need to pick the right movie that suits your mood at a particular moment? It's your precious Saturday evening and you do not want to waste it. I remember watching my first Wes Anderson movie and although I could not figure out his genre, I knew that I wanted to repeat that experience again. Sometimes I even feel so burdened by life that watching a horror movie that spikes cortisol levels is definitely not the right decision. Just by observing the different movie posters on Netflix, I can predict the genre of the movie. You know, by looking at different typography, imagery, taglines, and color palettes. Theorist Steve Neal describes this by saying, Pleasure lies in both the repetition of signifiers and the fundamental differences. You know, because genres provide audience a coherent and systematic set of expectations. He also says genres are instances of repetition and difference, and difference is absolutely essential to the economy of genre. When I first read this, I thought Neil was only focused on the producer's beneficial gain. And while this might have some truth to it, economy is also concerned with the watcher's time, effort, and money spent to watch the movie. Familiarity is what makes movies more appealing to the crowd. While critics may assess films based on their technical and artistic merits, production firms must prioritize making the most money possible. It is the showbiz, after all. In the event that a storyline proved to be lucrative, like a Western Hollywood production, companies would attempt to satisfy our desire for an equivalent encounter and replicate the pattern. Take all of Quentin Tarantino's work, for example. Despite their uniqueness in blending genres such as comedy, martial arts, crime, and even historical fiction in a non-linear plot, he is still essentially using his own distinct filming style, which audience are quite familiar with. This is what makes Tarantino a renowned auteur. However, not all movies with new and innovative genres are this lucky. When considering Scott Pilgrim Against the World, for example, while it has an extremely innovative genre in relation to other movies produced around that time, mainly in 2010, it did not receive the attention that it might have garnered has it been released a bit later. This film, directed by Edgar Wright, embraced a unique visual style that incorporated elements of video games and comic books. The unconventional approach may have been perceived as too innovative or unfamiliar for some audience, leading to a mixed reception. Audience might have had certain expectations based on the source material, and the film's departure from conventional storytelling may have caught some viewers off guard. In essence, the acceptance of genre hybrids can depend on a combination of factors, including the filmmaker's reputation, cultural context, audience expectations, and the way the film is marketed. Tarantino's success with genre blending may be rooted in his ability to balance innovation with a connection to cinematic traditions. While films like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World might have faced challenges in aligning their unique style with audience expectations at the time of release, Neil does not agree with confining socio-cultural issues in specific genres. He based his critique on important historical events such as America's involvement in World War II during the 1940s. A variety of genres were associated with war. Those genres vary from spy films and and war films all the way to musicals and westerns. The birth of new genres during this time such as the home front comedy, the occupation resistance picture, and the home front drama is a prime example of how social change has influenced cinematic expression. Neil's observation underscore the malleability of genres, demonstrating their ability to adjust, melt, and transform in reaction to fluctuating socio-cultural environments. Um, can, can you tell Lily I, I had to go? I gotta split. I can't get out of this thing. I'm holding it. Wait, are you leaving? We're saying goodbye to the apartment. The whole gang has to be here. The gang? Do you know who the gang is to me, Lily? The gang is a married couple who I never see anymore about to have their third kid. It's my ex-husband, and it's the guy I probably should have ended up with, with the beautiful mother of his child. So dramedy is also a new hybrid genre, mixing between comedy and drama. With the evolution of TV from cables to streaming services such as Netflix and Hulu, and the unprecedented awareness of the complex nature of human emotions and experiences by viewers, writers found themselves incorporating different elements to leave behind traditional storytelling. Fleabag, for instance, uses humor to navigate the overwhelming burdens of everyday life while still addressing deeper emotional needs. 
There are other notable examples of dramedy such as Orange is the New Black, How I Met Your Mother, and Bojack Horseman. Elements that distinguish dramedies from comedy is that you cannot just start watching them from the middle. You have to watch the shows in order to understand the development of events and in turn to enjoy the jokes. In the case of Seinfeld or Modern Family, I think you can pick it up regardless of where you start. This is the food of your people. Can I get you anything else? Actually, um, we're just trying to teach our daughter about your country. And as I'm saying that, I'm hoping you're from Vietnam. I was born there. <laughs> so was Lily. Oh, it's a beautiful country. Uh, my family still lives there. I hate Vietnam. Lily, honey, we don't hate. I hate Vietnam. Hey, oh, we need just a second. Lily, that was rude. I want to go home. No, it's important that you celebrate the culture of your ancestors. You are Vietnamese. No, I'm not. I'm gay. I'm gay. Honey, no, you're not gay. You are just confused. Oh, my God, what is wrong with me? It's like, a... oh, please, we have tons of lesbian friends. Odd that you would reference our friends and not us. Okay. That's okay. We should just... And those jokes in dramedy could also be dark. His beloved was outlining his plan to curtail gun violence. I'm just saying if people have the right pumped up kicks, maybe they can outrun the bullets. Or dealing with heavy emotional topics. Sci-fi horror, crime drama, and historical mystery are other notable examples of hybrid genre. Steve Neal's genre theory emphasizing repetition and difference in film intersects dynamically with Laura Mulvey's male gaze theory and Bell Hook's oppositional look, providing a comprehensive framework for media analysis. Neil's idea of repetition is evident in the perpetuation of gender and cultural stereotypes in cinema, aligning with Mulvey's insight into the male gaze, shaping visual narratives. However, Neil's emphasis on difference opens the door for audience agency, allowing for varied interpretation in films. In films like Crazy Rich Asians, the repetition of romantic comedy tropes is infused with cultural specificity and diversity, offering a fresh take on conventional genre. Bell Hook's oppositional look comes into play when audiences, particularly within Asian communities, actively engage with media to challenge stereotypes. Crazy Rich Asians not only subverts romantic comedy norms, but also reflects an oppositional gaze, empowering audiences to reshape narratives. The wedding ceremony, for example, between characters Rachel Chu and Nick Young stands out as a powerful example of cultural resistance and redefinition. Rather than conforming to traditional Western wedding expectations, the film celebrates Celebrates the couple's Asian heritage in a lavish, culturally rich setting. Embodying Neil's concepts on difference and Hook's call for active spectatorship, this synthesis of Neil, Mulvey, and Hook illuminates the intricate ways genre navigate and impact societal norms, with audience playing a vital role in shaping their narratives they consume. Steve Neil theories are crucial as they bridge the gap between filmmakers and their storytelling and audience. Understanding genre theory allows filmmakers to create films that understand or align with the evolution of socio-cultural issues.